Two brothers, Owen and Peter, began work in 2005 and starting salaries of €20,000 and €17,000 per annum, respectively. So that means that Owen's starting salary was 20000 and Peter's starting salary was 17000 Owen's salary increased by €500 per annum and Peter's salary increased by €1,250 per annum. This salary pattern will continue. So here we have a table. So year one means... 2005. That, that was the year when uh, Owen's starting salary was 20,000 and Peter's was 17,000. So Owen's salary increases by um, 500 euros per annum. Okay, so that's so for 2006, the salary will be 20,000 plus 500. For 2007. The start, starting salary will, will be 20,500 plus 500, which is 21,000, and so on, up to 2010. Peter's salary increases by 1,250 euros per annum. So we add 1,250 onto 17,000 to get 18,250. And we continue adding on 1,250 until we get his salary in the year 2010. We can see that in the year 2009, both brothers will earn the same amount, namely 22,000 euros. Owen claims that their salaries over the years can be represented by an arithmetic sequence. Now, what is an arithmetic sequence? Well, we've seen, we've seen that in previous videos. It's a sequence in which the difference between any two successive terms is a constant. So, I suppose the simplest arithmetic sequence is a set of natural numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay, the difference between any two successive terms is constant. So, for example, 2 minus 1 is 1. Um, another pair of successive terms is 3 and 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. We can see that the constant in this case is 1. Okay, if we pick any two successive terms, we could go on to pick the successive terms 9 and 10. 10 minus 9 is 1. Okay, take the difference between any two successive terms, and we should get the same result. So that difference is constant, it doesn't change. In this simple situation, in this particular arithmetic sequence, the constant is 1. Um, now in the examples that we just saw, for example, Owen's salary, the constant is 500 euros. If we get the difference between this term and this term, these are two successive terms in the sequence that gives Owen's salary, well, you know, um, we get 500 and if we take any other two successive terms the difference is also 500 okay so the difference is constant next we will get a formula that gives owns salary in the nth year of the pattern so let's look at owns salary the first term is 20000 and the difference between successive terms is 500 Okay, so in the, the notation for an arithmetic sequence, A is 20,000. A stands for the first term. And the common difference between successive terms, the constant difference, is 500 euros. Okay, in a previous video, we saw that to get the general term TN of an arithmetic sequence, we use this formula here. I explained where this formula comes from. So A, the first term is 20,000. A is also T1, of course. And we just want a general formula. So we are not taking any particular value of N. Um, D is 500. We can simplify this. So I'll multiply the 500 by the N. I'll write that first, although you don't have to, of course. 500 N. We 500 by minus 1 is minus 500 plus the 20,000. That gives us 19,500. So here's a general formula. So for example, if we wanted the second term, we could plug 2 in for n. Um, so as a quick check, I will just work out t2. It's got by plugging 2 in for n. So that would give us 500 times 2, which is 1,000. Um, and 1,000 plus 19,500 is 20,500. Okay, and that is indeed the second term. If we add 500 onto 20,000, we get the second term. Okay, next we will use the formula 
to find Owen's salary in 2015. Okay, so let's just look at this table. So the sixth term corresponds to the year 2010. So if we imagine extrapolating, um, I'll just get rid of this. We just extrapolate to the year 2015. What term of sequence is that? Well, the 7th is 2011, 8, 2012, 9, 2013, 10, 2014. This is the 11th term. So we want T11 of our sequence. Okay, we don't have to do it this way, but let's just start by doing this way. So we just plug 11 into this. So we have 500 times 11 plus 19,500. Okay, you will get 25,000 euros. Now, there is another way of doing it, of course, and that just involves simply adding 500 euros onto the salary, onto own salary for each year until we get to the year 2015. So, you know, um, year seven, for year seven, own salary will be 23,000. For year eight, it will be 23,500 and so on until we get to year 11. That's the year 2015, where we get 25,000. Next, we will look for a formula that gives the total amount earned by Peter from the first to the nth pat year of the pattern. Okay, so here's the sequence of Peter's salaries. The first term, A, is 17,000. D, the common difference or constant difference, is just got by taking any term and subtracting the previous term. And of course we know that that's 1,250. That's what we were given. So that's D. Now, we want to sum these terms, okay? So, we want to get the total amount earned by Peter over n years, whatever n is. n can be any number. So we want the sum of the first n terms of this arithmetic sequence. Um, when we're adding the terms, we refer to it as an arithmetic series, actually. We use the word series when we're adding the terms. So here's the formula for the sum of the first n terms. A, the first term is 17,000. We have to multiply that by 2 to get 34,000. We have to multiply n minus 1 by the difference, which is 1,250. And we just take all this expression and multiply by n over 2. Um, Okay, so simplifying what's inside, we get 1,250 times n. And we have 35,000 minus 1,250. Okay, I've simplified out what's inside the bracket, and it has to be multiplied by n over 2. Well, um, n over 2 times 1,250 is 625n squared. Okay, 1,250 divided by 2 is 625. And we have to multiply n over 2 by this number. We have to get half of this number, which is um, 16375. Actually, this is a plus sign here. So this is a formula that gives us the sum of any number of terms of this series. So if we want, say, the sum of the first two terms, we would work out S2. So just as a quick check, I'll work out S2. So I'll plug 2 into this thing. 625 by 2 squared plus 16375 times 2. Okay, so here is S2, and it's easy enough to see that if you add 17,000 onto 18,250, you will indeed get 35,250. So, this formula is true for n equals 2, and the chances are it's true for all values of n. So, that's something you could do, just, you know, pick some small value plug it in, then sum the first few terms, say the first two terms, just to confirm it, that your formula works. Or you could just simply work out S1. If you plug 1 in for n, um, that'll give you the sum of just one term. Well, it, it, it will just give you the first term, because S1 is equal to T1, okay? The sum of just one term is the first term. Next, we will get the total amount earned by Peter from the start of 2005 to the end of 2015. Now, we saw before that that's 11 years. So we want the sum of the first 11 terms of this series. 
and that's a simple matter of just plugging in 11 for n. Um, now this alternative approach is really just what we did. This is just going back to the formula, plugging in for a, plugging in for d, okay? But we don't need to do that, of course, because um, we already did it earlier, so we can just forget about this. This is really just doing the same thing as what we've just done, except we've already taken care of the part of the formula that involves 2a and multiplying by d. That's what um, that's what we did back up here. Give one reason why the graph below is not an accurate way to represent Peter's salary over the period 2005 to 2011. So this year here is meant to be 2005, okay, the initial year, and this year is 2006, 2007, 8, 9, 10, and, uh, well, 10, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, from this graph, you get the impression that Peter's salary increased linearly throughout each year. So, for example, for the first year, from 2005 to 2006, it looks like Peter's salary is increasing linearly. So, for example, halfway through that first year, Peter's salary is whatever this value is. It'll be a little bit more than... Um, yeah, it's, it gives the impression that Peter's salary is increasing at some rate continuously, okay? Uh, well, the rate would actually be given by the slope of this line. Linearly and continuous increase is what is assumed in this picture here, but that's not really what happens. Peter gets, presumably, his salary in steps at discrete times. Um, we could probably represent Peter's salary as a series of bars. So if we want to talk about Peter's salary for the first year, we just look at the height of this first bar, which is actually 17,000. And similarly for the next, the second year, whatever that value is, well, it's actually, um, I think it's 18,250, and so on. Okay, we just get the values from the terms of the, si of the series. Here we just graph those values. So that would probably be a better way to represent Peter's salary each year using something like a bar chart. So it doesn't make sense to say, for example, that halfway through the first year, Peter's salary is, you know, this value here, which is more than 17. We'll just say for the first year, Peter's salary is 17,000. For the second year, Peter's salary is 18,250 and so on.